Şimdi bir daha şey dedim. So, um, you might be heard to say that this is a sort of video on a big deal, which is makes me put the rest of the But, um, you know, just an introduction to pilgrimage. And um, it's it seems to be a subject that has uh, emerged in, in more bigger, maybe in the last five or ten years in some respects. So, this is what I, I see as theory, and, um, and there's not really, this is not an agenda in the sense that we're going to go down bullet point by bullet point, um, but I'm trusting that what we'll talk about is what pilgrimage is and isn't, but who goes, why, what are the destinations that can be defined, and then talk a little bit up and about pilgrimages close to home. And uh, that it's not all about spending thousands of dollars to travel halfway across the world to, to, to do something like that. The ways you can spend a lot of money over here are the ways you not spend a lot of money over here. So uh, that's what that's what we're going to do. So, um, so I want to start just by asking you to uh, think about a special journey, any kind of a special journey. That you have taken and um, ask the question that we've been talking about, just to seriously asking the question where did you go? Why did you go? What made it special? Any kind of special journey? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. About six years ago, I went to Ireland and uh, Made sure I had a route from Dublin because I wanted to retrace my grandfather's neighborhood and family originally from East of Ireland. But it was fun to find the stress and the war and the house was pretty much just the way. It was hard to find. Well, family history trips. Yeah, Strange, but um, I'm involved in a uh, musical right now. I'm rehearsing for. I haven't done that in 14, 15 years. Uh, it's Rock of Ages for the fourth quarter of January. But I am singing and reading music more than I have done in ever. <laughs> and it's it's very fascinating. I've always thought of myself as ah, I'm not a singer. I'm, I'm, I'm a poet. But everyone's telling me, oh yeah, yeah, you're doing just fine. These are people half my age that I'm working with mostly. Yeah. They say, you're doing a great job. It's it's great. So we'll jump. And I'm, I'm realizing that's something I just haven't done in about 14, 15 years. I feel it in general. So yeah, I guess that's a kind of a journey. You know, journey to interior for a journey. Reawakening something inside myself that I forgot I had. Mm -hmm. I got retired. Ourselves sometimes, and I always like you know, the challenge, so I started doing classical trips. And she like got me up in DC and took me to trips for you know, like six, seven days, and just kind of hobo. I mean, uh, all my equipment on my bike, um, not really a spiritual journey of sorts, but a destination and just by yourself. And uh, for me to be one, and I, I think I've done that three or four of those, and it kind of got us in the region to do this community. So you're not doing it. Susan and I have two, but I would call special journeys to China. Um, and both times we went early so we could see stuff before we were in China by the day it was in the plant. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so they were both special trips. We went there, why? You know, because we went to adopt. Uh, 
Um, there was like a clear sort of thing that we were going too deep. Uh, in, in my, you know, and, and it was special, of course, each and every day was my own as well. Uh, but it was different. Uh, and, you know, I said, you know, but that happened a lot of times. Um, or even family, family related trips were that material. But are any of these, if you could just think back, you know, look, you, you guys can, can bracket the whole Camino uh, experiences as we were talking about, because you did a little chance to hear that too. But were, were any of these pilgrimages? And if so, you know, what, what made them, um, what made them a pilgrimage as opposed to something else? Or why were they a pilgrimage if they were? The word is a role, and then it's sort of like the word of COVID. She got me with ESSF.com and I, I did uh, research and, um, and I go back four great grandfathers, Watson's, and I found all the graves. And then uh, and then the grandmother, and then I did a burial site and got laid in the fifth great great burial site, Mary, the oldest great church in America. And, and they only know that because this church prides itself that it has every uh, vestry meeting record ever on it, back to the 1720s. <laughs> and so they had all these church records, obviously, the legacy records, and they you know, came up with it. So that was kind of a pilgrimage in terms of, you know, we were exactly where we were flying, but we had a mission. And, and she was one of them. Yeah, it was, well, we were two points of Mississippi, Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, Maryland, Virginia, Delaware, you know, both yeah. campus are in that. Mm -hmm. So it had a goal this time. I see yeah. a couple of examples. So the issue, issue of, of goal. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say the goal was? How would you articulate that goal? It wasn't to end up the last destination. It doesn't sound like it. It was something else that. Yeah, I, you know, we had stuff on paper, but it was to visualize. And try to tie as much of that for real, validating it as, well as we could. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it didn't fill all the gaps. There's still a lot of places we really couldn't find, you know, tombstones because they were 150 foot down there in case of the dead. Mm -hmm. And it's a journey that was or was not. So the question is, what is then a pilgrimage? And, and how is it distinct uh, from you know, a, another kind of trip? And so depending on where you look, you know, some will say a pilgrimage is a sacred journey undertaken for spiritual purpose. That would be if we were looking at a guidebook that talked about going on a spiritual pilgrimage. Um, or you know, at the bottom of the board, pilgrimage is a search for meaning, purpose, values, or truth. And I would think that perhaps going on a family history thing helps you sort of find meaning. It helps you sort of anchor yourself in, in some larger story, perhaps. Um, and so now that I've seen the place where this happened, and I've seen the place where that happened, I've seen the place where this person was, and all that kind of stuff, that would help you. I think in, in that sense, back in the 60s or 70s, when Roots came out, uh, my mom got all excited. And so she really went, this was well before Ancestry.com. This was the hardcore going through, writing letters, uh, visiting places, getting all of that documentation. They made several trips to Sweden so that they could go to all of these places and find cousins and all of those folks and it was you know the roots said, said it but it clearly for her she relearned sweet she learned swedish which she had learned in growing up because her parents wanted her to be american they would speak swedish to each other but they wouldn't speak swedish to her mom and so she had to teach herself swedish so she would you know and so they went back and, and did this um and visited all of these people you know furniture and settlement and all this kind of stuff in her house now 
So I, but then I would say that that was a sense of search for me. Uh, maybe not true, but you know what I mean. So um, you, you probably heard this. I, uh, um, there was a workshop yesterday online connected with the convention, okay? And it was offered by Jan Head, my privilege. So um, of course I watched it. Uh, <laughs> it just sort of came up like, whoa, this is cool. I didn't know this was going to happen. Um, but she points out, and, and this is, I think, because it's some of the stuff we want to talk about, is that the issue behind children is all about attention. Why are you doing it? And, uh, and that we want to embrace the whole experience from stepping out the front door, uh, dealing with the security lines, dealing with rain, dealing with it's all about the whole experience. It's with this intention to sort of immerse yourself um, in the experience, not to avoid the unpleasant or difficult. Um, there's a mindfulness to it, to pay attention to what you're doing. There is a destination in mind where things may happen on the journey. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's, uh, at least in terms of what she was talking about, and she's doing this sort of excursion activities, there's inner preparation and, and advanced preparation, more than just planning your itinerary. It's sort of saying, this is what I'm going to do, this is sort of being present to all of that. And then in a spiritual direction, uh, there's sort of expectation um, of, of the sacred, that, that the sacred will be something true, but will, will become part of what you are doing in the world. And for those of you who've got any kind of privileges, you know, they can speak to that in the world. I don't think that would be But what I wanted to do too, <clears throat> this will not surprise you. So I like to sort of situate a lot of this stuff in the universal experience. Um, and, and not just think about it in terms of what is uh, what is the Christian experience um, of pilgrimage. But this is a universal experience. And, and people do these things for different reasons. And so it'd be interesting to hear what y'all were what your intention was, what you, what you wanted to get out of the Camino. An expert, but you know what, what? What do people want to get out of it? And so, you know, Hinduism has a long, millennia old um, history of pilgrimages. And there, are, if you just Google pilgrimage and Hinduism, you'll you'll just get all sorts of hits. There are some major ones, and uh, one of them is this the Kumbh Mela, which happens every twelve years. It has to do with the circuit of the planet Jupiter. That they pay attention to. So it happens every 12 years. They go to several different sites. They're always on rivers. There are a couple of them are on the Ganges. And the big one um, uh, happens at um, where is it? Where is it? Part, part of one. Yeah, on the Ganges. And, and it's a bathing ritual. So you go there and you bathe um, along with a lot of other things. Why? For the release of sins. You go in the sacred river of the Ganges, the other Ganges, you go there and, and are um, and you are released from sins because you made that word and you bathed in the river. There's another famous um, city on the Ganges, um, depending on uh, which uh, uh, town name you use, you know, is it uh, <coughs> Bombay or is it Mumbai? You know, but this particular city is either Benares or Varanasi. And there, there are um, historically a thousand year old, what they call ghats, G H A T, the bathing platforms, but there are also some cremation ghats. So you go to Benares or uh, Benarasi and you bathe in, in this river, that they're throwing ashes on folks who have been burned on these, on these cremation ghats into the same river. And it's all about, you know, there, the, the afterlife, the notion of the afterlife of Hinduism and the ashes going into the river might affect where you show up next time around. But still the bathing there is this sort of release of sin. So there's the intention. You're making this pilgrimage to go to um, to Benares or uh, to Haridwar or some of these other places for the release of sins. That's not the only reason why you do the pilgrimages in India. This is this is why you're um, and, uh, for some of them you go to uh, Benares. Uh, Benares is, is a sacred city for Shiva, the great 
you know, sort of deities. And you might go because it's the sake of the Shiva and the Shivite. Um, you know, so there, there are a lot of differences. Um, what about Buddhism? There are several different sites of Buddhism. One of the primary ones is this place called Bodhaya. Um, anybody know Siddhartha Gautama's story? Why really was it not? Give us, give us the, 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 the Reader's Digest, Reader's Digest version. Uh, well, essentially, he was born a prince in the Sudo in the Winter Districts, um, lived a very privileged life, and, uh, and that was kind of his coming of age. He went out uh, into the town and saw um, someone who was sick, uh, someone who was suffering, and someone who died. And he came back. Because he never seen anything that had died. Um, and so, although he was buried at Kilgore, he decided to go on his pilgrimage for himself. And he went uh, journeying throughout uh, the area of India. And his life ends in the retreat of Mr. Sukhmar after years and years of uh, watching him for the Yeah, so Bodhgaya is where this. Tree, and whether it's the tree under which he died or the tree under which he, he gave the life and then went from there to, to teach everybody else, you know, but that's the tree theoretically there at Buddha Gaya. Um, and so pilgrims will go to Buddha Gaya because that was a significant place for, for the Buddha, where the Buddha attained enlightenment. Maybe they would too, um, or maybe they would just retrace some of. Um, so the art is to to enlighten. So this is one of the primary Buddhist uh, religious uh, sites. Different than release of sins in Buddhist sites, well, you could argue that it's a sin for the you know to to attain enlightenment as opposed to uh, doing all the bad stuff that you that you've done. Sikh Sikh religion or Sikhs many are uh, they, they they call themselves Sikhs, but in the English that doesn't sound um, so this is this is Amritsar, which is a city in Punjab, where the Sikh uh, religion is uh, founded. And this this is the Golden Temple. You've heard about the Golden Temple of Amritsar. It shows up in the news every so often because either Muslims or Hindus will attack it. <laughs> um, you know, and, and this is the uh, the major uh, house of worship for Sikhs in the world. It's called a Gurdwara. And um, we have two group bars in Denver. There's one out in Commerce City that really looks like it's a group bar, um, not quite like that. Um, and then there's then there's a, a gathering, a group bar that meets over here, um, just south of Rappaho on Lima or Lima at the Grange Hall, the Centennial Grange Hall. And every Saturday or Sunday, they take it over and they set it up. And that's where they do their weekly gathering. Well, so you so six would go to Amritsar because this is sort of a lot of their religion is founded in this Buddhist temple. One of the key features of, of Sikhism, or other than uh, religious uh, sort of tenets and beliefs, is that they provide free meals when, when, when the place is open. Obviously, it's not open at the top of the day. So one. Down here um, in Centennial, when on the nights that it's open, they provide free meals. And whoever shows up, um, I've been to uh, one Parliament of the World's Religions that happened in Salt Lake City, and the Sikhs every day had lunch. Pray when you wanted to show up. And it's always a vegetarian lunch, by the way. It was the same thing as one of those individual recipes. You go in, you take off your shoes, you cover your head. And you just sit down in rows and they come next to you. And you sit by whoever you're sitting next to. Well, at the, uh, at the Golden Temple of Amritsar, um, they eat meals. They serve 50,000 meals a day. Every day. You know, where's that money coming from? Devotees? Because you're not paying for it. Uh, and for anybody, 
So, you know, this, uh, so that's, you know, a pilgrimage site for, to, to, to be, I guess, at the family or home place. First one that you probably most often think about is Dodge. Um, yeah, going to, to Mecca. Um, here, uh, I, I, not quite in the same way, but for many others, I'll want to think about the witness and talk about this uh, in some respect. But to go on the Hajj, I talk about your attention, you enter a special state of purity with your clothes. You don't cut your hair or your nails while you're on the Hajj. Um, when you enter Mecca, you walk seven times around the Kaaba. And, and then you try and get up to it and kiss or touch the black stone which is in the column. Um, you know, you pray twice in the direction of the column. You run seven times between a couple of mountains on the seventh day. Uh, you know, there's a, a, a reminder of where all of their duties are. They visit other holy places. Um, they throw stones at three walls, symbolizing the devil. You know, they throw stones at the devil. So this is, you know, this is a very intentional thing. It was expected of Mecca to go, unless you were prevented by reasons of economy, health, and those kinds of things. So it's it's more than an option. This is something that is as one of the five pillars of the song. Yeah, it's not just you know, it's yeah. If you do have a salary point of view, you're interested in the mosques and the mosques and the eastern uh, side of it, or you have to. Saudi and that that fly with a Jetta, which is on the Red Sea, the business, and it was very much, and I would say Capricorn is full of pilgrims. And they're wearing kind of like like short bathrooms on the plane. That's all they had as far. I don't know if they had a overnight bag or not. They may try to look like too much. <laughs> but uh but I say Capricorn was full of men in these bathrooms. It was like they were uh, the closest city in that for even 30 miles. Yeah, it was pretty impressive seeing that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and and of course, you know what what that does are all wearing the same thing, and that just dissolves all sorts of distinctions, which is um, totally off the topic. Which is one of the reasons why, in at least in the Episcopal Church and other places, we put a pall over a casket so that everybody is buried in the same covering, regardless of the ornamentation on the casket. Everybody has the same pall. Um, to, to minimize all of those other other distinctions that might happen. But in the church, everybody's equal in, in the sight of God. And that, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so here is again another significant you know pilgrimage. And clearly the intention goes back to how are you prepared? You know, all those kinds of things, from what you're wearing and, and all that sort of stuff. So uh, major, major pilgrimage. Well, getting closer to home, um, two years. Of course, from which uh, Islam arose as well. But even Judaism was created in terms of pilgrimages. There were pilgrimages to Olympus in, in Greece and Agadaris and um, uh, various Near Eastern sites by non, by non Jews, you know, not, by non Jewish people. And then we've got all sorts of stories um, of, of pilgrimage within Jews. There are the three big pilgrimage festivals. The Jews, Passover, and Pentecost, and uh, Tabernacles, or uh, the Feast of the Festival of Booths in the fall. These were times where males were expected to go to Jerusalem. Not everybody did every year, but those are mentioned in the Bible. There are particular songs, often called Songs of Ascent, that pilgrims would sing as they were ascending Mount Zion. So it was well established the idea of pilgrimage, was well established with the Jews. Read it, you know what to look for, and you can see it in, in scripture pretty easily. Um, classic places, you know, Elijah, it sounds like he went 40 days to get away. He went to Mount Sinai, or Mount Fort, I think they were on the first one. Northern or Southern, they're called the same mountain, the same thing. And he was 40 days on that pilgrimage where he was still small place. Um, Bethel, Gilgal, Shiloh, uh, all of these towns that you, you hear about in, in, in the Bible were pilgrimage sites. The problem with pilgrimage sites before the Israelites got there. Uh, it's, 
itself became much more so. Jerusalem became a biblical center of the universe. Um, there's, there's a one of the great songs that came about all the people's people say, Oh, I was born there, I was born there, and it becomes sort of the name of, of the ruler of the universe. Jesus made pilgrimages to Jerusalem, set his eyes to go to Jerusalem. Um, so, so Jerusalem and other sites um, for in Judaism became significant. And now, of course, the Jews are moving up to the original road to the Western Wall. Um, and that, I would say, probably connects them with their tradition. It also puts them in contact with that most sacred, uh, what they would say is probably the most sacred site of the that is being the remnant of, of the Palestinian. So you go into get released from sins, you're going to connect with your founding place, you're going to retrace you know, other folks' journeys. They even have different intentions for why folks might go like they want to go. Well, what about Christians? <coughs> so um, the earliest evidence we have of Christian pilgrimages are Constantine's mother, St. Helena, going to Jerusalem. Uh, where she finds this piece of the true cross. <laughs> um, and that was in 326 to 328, Christianity only been legal for a decade. And so here's Constantine's mother who goes to Jerusalem. About 50 years later, um, we have an account by a, a woman named Tajiri, perhaps her, um, uh, who made a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And, um, and she was writing this account of her pilgrimage back to a group of women back in Gaul. And she visited Mount Sinai, Jerusalem, Mount Nebo, which is where Moses stood to look into the promised land because he couldn't go, uh, to the tomb of Job. Um, there are a lot of different places where that is attributed to be, so I'm not quite sure. Went to the Sea of Galilee. And she wrote this huge detailed account of all of the services of the people. And all of these things that, that happened in Jerusalem in the fourth century, which formed the basis of why we do what we do during Holy Week. So we've got about 18 centuries worth of stuff because of that pilgrims were in that building. And so she went to make that. It's clear that she was doing pilgrimage in terms of what, what she tied the book. So our history goes back there you know, for a long time. And so the Holy Land is clearly been. Place from the beginning. Moving a little closer to, to our experiences of uh, Britain. Pilgrimage sites in Britain. Uh, Canterbury Tales in <laughs> Pilgrims on the way to Canterbury, right? Um, thousands of pilgrims went on a uh, journey to Canterbury uh, to visit the shrine of mm -hmm. Thomas Peck. That was where I really went away. Um, and see how, you know, with their problems. They come a long distance all over Europe. They come on foot. Others might go on horseback um, if they can afford it. But still, they wanted to get close to Canada. Um, Iona, uh, with this one, Iona, going up to those places, uh, was a pilgrimage site from the seventh century. Um, and you go to that, that what they call thin place where earth and heaven sort of meet in a in a and the union way. Um, one that you may not have heard of unless you walk in certain circles, right? walk in certain circles is Walsingham. Any of you ever heard of Walsingham? Okay. So Walsingham, um, there was an important vision of Mary at Walsingham. Um, and so the, uh, the, the, the thought was this uh, Saxon noblewoman the 11th century had this vision of Mary, and so it became an important uh, pilgrimage site. And it still is for high church Anglo Catholics. Um, and uh, I, uh, I've got several Facebook friends who do that category. And every so often, some of you will show up about a visit to um, the, you know, Our Lady of Walsingham Shrine. So, but it, it dates, it predates, um, it predates Reformation. So it's not just one of these late things that has, has remained. 
significant. So there are a number of, of pilgrimage sites within Britain itself that people from all of see. I've never been to Canada. I would go to that would be in some respects a pilgrimage. Uh, but uh, it's so there are these pilgrimage sites there. You know there are local shrines. Um, I put Moor um, in, in brackets because while it's um, really a local shrine in France, it's become internationalized with people seeking healing and coming from all over the world. Um, but Guadalupe, there are native Guadalupe, um, a significant shrine for Mexicans. Maybe not so much for a lot of other folks, but significant for Mexicans. Why? Because of the vision of the Virgin. Same thing with Lourdes, the vision of the Virgin. Also, the vision of the Virgin. Um, Cartago, which is the national shrine of Costa Rica. The vision of the Virgin in Cartago. That's, that's what the picture is, is, is of the, the shrine building. I visited that uh, as part of um, the trip of students that I took to, to Costa Rica. When you give on, and, and Ticos are uh, Costa Rican Catholics, um, or Costa Ricans who are Catholic make a pilgrimage to Cartago from all over the country. And if you're a true pilgrim, you walk. And as soon as you hit the shrine precincts, you get down and you go in to the building on your knees. And so when we were there in 1996, I'm not um, you can see where the, the precincts start because the courtyard is all out of the stone. And you can see the ones that were really the devout on their knees going in. And once they walked in, you can see them. some of them didn't start the precincts, they started at the door uh, and, and went up the aisle on their knees. Um, there was a grotto, like there are in many of these places, and it had all these little amulets of body parts that had been healed because of prayers there. Um, and in this case, there's an arm, sleeve, you know, all of these teeny little interact charms that you wear in charms. Outside, there was a sacred um, spring, another feature of a lot of these, these shrine sites. And you we saw you know, mothers sort of splashing water in the shrine. Others were filling up little bottles of sustainable water. You know, so these, this is a, you know, clearly um, a local, if, you, if you've never been to Costa Rica, you probably never heard of Costa But everybody in Costa Rica. Are there other local shrines you can think of? Is there anything in the US that you can think of that, that fills the same? The yeah. Alamo. Yeah. 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 The Texas. Yeah. 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 You, you could argue that, that you could make a, a pilgrimage to, well, I know, we're thinking about that. I know this happened for my son and my daughter. Then me in a different way is these American heritage trips that you would do when you were in junior high. And you would go to at least Washington, maybe up the East Coast. Um, I know that one that I went on, we were in Washington, we were all the way up to Boston. So we saw quite a bit of the historical sites of the East Coast. I hadn't even thought about that as a pilgrimage, um, but it did probably was in, in that way connected with that, those bits and pieces of our heritage uh, in ways. So it certainly might be a community for our students. Um, Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, can you think of the other? Yeah, so a significant historical uh, besides what about the news? Going to NBC. Maybe St. John's. At least for this area, too. And there is the National Shrine um, for Roman Catholics. There is a huge building, I can't remember what that is, the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. I mean, there is a huge building in D.C. that's kind of, you know, I don't know if they consider it a, a building site. I don't know what it is. Um, they are here in, in Golden. It's considered a building site, but just as they are, the people from Golden. I think walking labyrinths can be a building. You can come back to you know, for many for Native Americans, we would be or, or um, Santa Creek. So we were in Jamestown, the Episcopal Church, and some of the reconciliation with the American Indians. Yeah. So 
some way, I mean, you know, the question is, would you go to these things just because uh, you want to see it? Um, or do you go with uh, some other kind of sort of deeper uh, goal? Okay. I have a question that uh, involving the campuses or something in Utah that you can consider. Yeah, probably. Um, there, there might be, there, I don't know, I think that's a good question. There might be a, a pilgrimage trail that would lead from various places from the east to Salt Lake City, tracing sort of the, the warm migration that goes through the Hawaii. They, they do a trek. They do a trek. Okay. Uh, that's a period of time. And they pull their wagon and track for four, five, six days. Yeah. So that, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, you know, certainly. I remember the first time I went to the temple um, as, as a tourist. Uh, and, you know, that was really the only temple. And that's our temples all over. So you don't need to make the same kind of journey that you had to make even 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, you know, there's a temple up in Fort Collins, there's a temple just down the street here. So for all of those things that you might need to do uh, to, to enter the temple, you don't have to do it quite the same way. So, but I think that that track would be good. Well, here, obviously, more about the six. Um, one of the ones, uh, the questions that is significant is the Camino. Um, I won't say a heck of a lot of it, but again, one of the reasons that you would go is to gain a plenary indulgence, you know, which is a forgiveness of sins kind of. So you complete you complete the pilgrimage, and your intention is to get that plenary indulgence, uh, uh, remission of the entire temporal punishment for sin. Uh, you know, Saint James and Bill probably talked about this. His remains were buried there um, in Jerusalem, buried in Saint John. Uh, I, I really won't say more. Uh, there are just multiple routes to to get to Saint John. Um, pilgrimage is close to home, and this is where labyrinths come in. You don't have to go very far to, to get a labyrinth, and um, you know, many of the, the great Gothic cathedrals have these in the floor. Um, Sharp, uh, St. Michael Major, Padre, San Vitale, Ravenna, they have these four labyrinths. Uh, they face the altar. So when you enter, you enter facing the altar, and then you move around labyrinths or not mazes. You never have to make a decision on where to start. Um, and, but if the labyrinths on the cathedral floor you can go as a path to choose, which is why we're ending up uh, uh, and start facing, facing the altar. There are um, maybe six. Permanent labyrinths in Denver, um, a bunch of portable ones. Um, one is outside St. John's Cathedral, across the outside, across the front door, across the street, called St. Dominic's Park. Um, but there's a, there's a labyrinth there. There's one in St. Barnabas Episcopal Church, and I built a cafe over there too. Um, I, I, did, I didn't know this until yesterday, but really old, where Elitches used to be. And it's on the side of the original carousel in the back. Um, at 38th and Tennyson. So there you go, you can go to old images. And there's one at Monty Press, um, too. If you go down to um, Cathedral Ridge, where I think the Public Center, there's a big one that's been built down there. And then there are portable apps. You can buy them on, on campus. <coughs> I bought one when I was at DU. Um, Island has one. Um, and we don't have the problem with Good Shepherd to get a really big one. None of our rooms are big enough, except for the parish hall, except he's got this big pillar. In the <laughs> so we can't put a ladder in the ground. Um, but you can buy that you know, a few hundred dollars for, for a large multi course. Uh, so um, well, there's, there's a few more around too. Um, even I think Luther Church in Greenwood Village has one. I have heard there's one at Kenny's Hospital, I'm not sure. There's one, if you go south on 25 and 
Western West that Wolfenburg is the elements of what it is. Kind of meander through all the branches. If you get to Santa Fe, you've gone too far. And on the left hand side, there's a place that's called the sanctuary place. Hmm. And it is a whole little place. Somebody got some people together and bought it um, in honor of their daughter who's still by their side or something like that. Okay. And it has a say it has a, a elaborate where people kind of leave stuff like they do at roadside um memorial. Mm -hmm. Um it has a medicine wheel, it has a little Buddhist garden, it's uh mm -hmm. it's got a whole bunch of some really cool places. There's only like six parties. <laughs> and it and it has a, a building that's open. From I don't know, it's nice and it's got little libraries, no bathrooms, some little tiny areas in which it's in. So this may not have come up in the there's I mean there's there's a website for the years and years. Yeah. And so these may not have come up because they were in the paper. Uh, you know, so uh, yeah, I mean it's that so maybe it's not then. Yeah, yeah. And so that was the that was the it's a really cool place. Um so if you want to do that, yeah. That's that's a way to do it. It's a journey. It's like I say, it's not something you can make a decision. Uh, you go to one place for another, you get your attention. Um, the Diocese of Colorado, we'll hear more about this uh, next week, um, has offers opportunities for pilgrimage. And they've done uh, Holy Land pilgrimages. There's one coming up um, in May of 23. They're doing another Camino in October of 23. Iona and Scotland in May of 2023. So there are these, these pilgrimages that the diocese is sort of sponsoring. I know that the Camino that you went on had been postponed from 2020 because of COVID. And um, what they did uh, out of the Office of the Bishop was come up with what they call um, sort of virtual pilgrimages. Did you do one? Did you do that? No, no. You did it? Okay, so maybe you might have done that as well. Yeah. But, but it's, you know, to, to be intentional. They have uh, group meetings, um, a group retreat, uh, and all of that. And you would choose your own place to walk. And you might say, so for every mile on the Rio Camino, I'll walk one mile. You know, measure it down. Yeah, you can do it any way you want. It. And I know that several people did that. Uh, and uh, I don't know if they're planning on doing those anymore. But they're, uh, so that was another. Uh, another option. So you know, there, there are these things that, that are sort of close to home. And then um, kind of on the end with, uh, uh, you know, secular pilgrimages. And and so this gets sort of to, to your point about some of this bicep lighting. Um, the, the, the triple crown, I don't know if you know about these, these are these are three huge Hikes. The Appalachian Trail runs from Georgia to Katahdin, Maine. Uh, the Continental Divide Trail runs all the way from Canada to, to Mexico, as does the Pacific, the Pacific Crest Trail. The Pacific Crest Trail is 2,650 miles. It takes about five months to walk if you're going to do this. And some people I've, I've listened to, I've seen a lot of uh, documentaries done on these, and this is a lot of sort of this and stuff. That people may not go on these with quite the intention of, of thinking that you're doing the Camino, but, it doesn't, but they all talk about how they change, how this, this endeavor changes you. Um, and, and so, does that expand the notion of, of what it is, of what pilgrimage is? Is it you go with one intention and something else happens uh, that, that changes you? So these anyway, if you do all three of those those huge hikes, you, you get what is called the, the triple crown. Uh, people do that. Um, I, I was thinking about these multi-day bike rides um, because I did one in 2005 from San Francisco, Los Angeles, to raise money. The intention was to raise money for the awareness of AIDS research. So that was the intention. Um, but I had no idea all the other stuff that was going to go on in me after hours and hours and hours of saying why uh, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Where where the emotional pieces would fit and all that kind of stuff. And 
they had planned a variety of things over the course of the week. Manipulate them. There were certain the last night we were on the beach in Ventura, and uh, and everybody went out and they had candles to put in the in the ocean. That was kind of this. And there was a little shrine. I mean, so I didn't know that that was going to happen. I just knew I was going to buy a five hundred sixty five month over the course of the week. And uh, but you know there was I, I didn't know. Changed. There was a community to it. There was a lot of reparation, all of this stuff that, that we talked about earlier in terms of the reparation for spiritual was mirrored by, by that reparation for the um, And then, of course, next week we get uh, Kurt and Melissa behind the sale talking about their experiences. If you haven't seen the Martin Sheen video estimate has moved away, uh, Good luck finding it in any of the libraries. I mean, it's always on. You know, everybody always has all of the copies out. Um, and again, uh, Head talked about this you know, and She said it's a little romanticized, and it is, uh, but it's, it's a good group. Uh, I think it's, it's a really good group. It does talk about how the law changed. Uh, and uh, in surprising ways. So, all of these people. So, um, yeah, if you want uh, a few minutes uh, to sort of to chat about any of this, um, you know, but, um, that's, that was kind of the introduction uh, to, to this sort of larger concept uh, and how it could spell its way out in, in an easier life rather than just uh, making a huge uh, time travel sort of thing. How would people do it? Uh, and I know that Jan yesterday. Workshop is how do you do this? How would this form a community? Because that's the whole issue of the, of the convention is, is building up church, forming the church, forming the practice. What would a what would pilgrimage do for that in the sort of local context? Was sort of the big idea that she was talking about, which I thought was really pretty interesting. Idea. So, anyway, comments, thoughts, questions. I'm no expert. Bit of that for now. Yeah, they're, they're very good. I'm just I'm just raising the question that we talked about earlier is you know, the intentionality piece of that is, is it going to visit something and experience that, or is it you know we're we're, we're getting ready to go? I can see being burning there and they have really have to cut the shit for you to I I got what is it? She and her husband do all the time. My It's an alternate okay, so it's the reality. Yeah. But the people, the people who go don't fit any one of the yeah. of the she can pass an officer. She can pass an officer. Beyond sort of the areas that that's in the food. Yeah, and, and, and Nadine had a prayer, a blessing that we used a few weeks ago that was from the finally the church has decided we should be there too. Look, <laughs> they set up this kind of alternate sort of spiritual space during and that blessing came from that. So I you know I, I would see that sort of as a pilgrimage. In the kind of the same way that Hodge would be, because it's not that you go to a site anytime, you go at this particular time, Hodge happens at this particular time. Um, you know, who knows that? Happens at these particular times. Burning Man happens. At, you can you can do the the Camino at any time you want. It's not really put up with the weather or whatever. Um, so it's I would see it as a privilege to kind of hodge for it. Other thoughts? It struck me when you were talking about you know the blood of the serpent and the, the triple crown. That there's a risk in um, 
delineating pilgrimages as religion and secular. Because that put God in this box and not in this box. And I think that when we can when we can make that allow God to be as big as God is, then then that opens up the opportunity it invites God into both both experiences. Right, right. And I, I, I would say, I think, you know, when I use the language secular, I think most people who would go, or I would say most, a lot of people who would do some of these things would not see it as a religion. They would see it, you know, I'm from Iowa, the, the Pacific Coast, I'm from the Pacific Coast Trail for fun, for exercise, or, you know, um, to, to get over my midlife crisis, you know, whatever, you know, that they don't see it as, as something that it's not, they don't. Initially defined it in a, in a spiritual way. Right, right, right. Um, and I bet you half of the people in the arena are second. No mm -hmm. kids and all the challenge. Spiritual also, because you visit so much history and churches, but you know, everybody was there for different reasons. Mm -hmm. It wasn't totally didn't see everybody with crosses on or like that. It was kids, most of them. Yeah. You know. I had a student um at Duke who always was long after who did a portion and uh, yeah, she had some meditation which her completed. But I don't think that she went with um, with much of a, a spiritual view. She certainly didn't talk about the spiritual view. So yeah, that's not to lessen the, the, the experience at all. Just maybe plus the intentionality of the real thing. That's maybe a distinction. All right, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We'll look forward to next week. Make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>